our community, our hometown. This is Carney Live, presented by 102.7 FM and KMO TV. Carney Live is a close up look at the people, places, and events that matter to you. And now, here are the hosts of Carney Live, Mike Davis and Jim Dickerson. Wow, I love that studio audience. It's so good to be back. I'm your host, Mike Davis. Welcome to Carney Live. It is good to be back along with Brian Watts, our producer engineer. Hello, Brian. Yep, hello. And Jim Dickerson, the co-host of this very program, the most important radio program in the world. That's and uh, Jim is the co-host of this, this very program, Carney Live. Um, okay, now we've got some... Extra kind of activities going on this morning, Brian. Can you uh, sort of help me, help guide me through that? Be my, uh, be my mentor. Be the lead. Yeah. Well, let's just go right into it. How about that? All right. Do watch we, it. Do you want to set uh, it up? Yeah. Wanna, yeah. Set, I was going to say. Well, here I'll sit here. Can all I, right. Yeah. Can let I Jim set, set it up. up. Jim set it up. Okay. Good evening, Carney. <laughs> it's not actually evening. <laughs> let's do that again. Good okay. afternoon, Carney. Go. Uh, We've talked about this on previous shows before, but as many as you know, many of you know, coming to the amphitheater on Saturday, Saturday is Shooting Star, the concert that I've been waiting for for years. <laughs> and Missouri, right? And mm -hmm. yep, I'm not even going to be in town. Oh, because I've sorry, to, Jim. I've got to do the the air show up north uh, that happens every year, and mm -hmm. why they scheduled it on the one week that I'm not. Mm, I, mm, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> However, they didn't check with you. Then they should in the future. I know. Mm -hmm. However, our own Brian Watts went out and he talked to the members of shoot one of the members of That's your cue, Brian. One of, yes. one of the members of Shooting Star and let's talk and let's take a look. Brian Watts talks to Shooting Star. I'm talking with Bill Larson from the classic rock band Missouri and Dennis LaFoon from the band Shooting Star. Both groups started in the late 70s and were based in Kansas City, and they're both playing out at the amphitheater this weekend. Bill, I want to start with you. How did you first get started in Missouri? Well, uh, back in, um, I think it was about 1976, I got a call from uh, Ron Hodgson, Ron West, and... Uh, and basically, he, he woke me up at, at the, really early in the afternoon, like it was like one o'clock, I think. <laughs> so uh, he, um, you know, asked for me and I said, yeah, this is me. And how's it going? You know, this is Ron Hodgson. And, you know, being from Kansas City, Ron Hodgson was was the guy, you know, the chessman and and all that. And I looked up to him and his brother so much. And uh the entire family is just so talented. And he asked me if I'd like to uh, make an album with him. I said, well, let me think about it. Yeah, uh, sure. So, yeah, that's how that started. That wasn't a hard question then, was it? Not at all. Not when I was uh, 20 years old, I think. Something sure. like that. And, yeah. And then I read the band took a break, but uh, you and Ron got back together in 1994 to tour around. How did that part yeah. come about? Uh, just wanting to play, I think. and. Uh, he wanted to just wanted to play and uh you know he got some guys uh he got uh, chris jones and uh, jimmy love and uh, chris Wil wilkerson i think was his last name and uh played bass and uh, brett ecklin great guitar player he now lives in california um yeah and then so we just started doing some shows and had a great time and i think we did it again and in 95 right yeah you guys uh got back together in about 1995 and and did some more uh touring didn't you well no i ron, ron was still doing that and uh oh, he was so this came about this this go around lane turner and i the original guitar player from missouri um did a uh, memorial for webb waterman that was one of the guitar players at uh and back in the 80s and uh he had died of cancer and we did a memorial with his his sons and we played and so afterwards backstage he goes you know that sounded pretty good we should probably get a band together <laughs> so long story short we uh um 
got a hold of Dana, Ron's wife, and then Ron, and asked him if they would mind if we uh, went out and did it. And he was retired at the time. So um, he they thought about it, and it didn't take more than a day, and he said yes. And Dennis, Shooting Star also started back in the late 70s and then took a hiatus in the mid-80s and then reformed again in 1989 when you joined the group. How did you become involved with the band at that point? Well, I, uh, you know, I'd always, uh, I had always known Van and he called me up one day and we met and like, you know, I was in seventh heaven. I mean, it was like, you know, the coolest thing that ever happened to me. And I'd had a great career up to that point, but that just put it on top. Yeah. So I started with Van and gosh, that's been like, you know, I always say it seems like a hundred years ago, but it's, 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 it's been fantastic. Uh, the greatest trip I ever had. Oh, great. Uh, Bill, for you, what's the best part of playing with Missouri? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Well, um, being back with Lane Turner, after 40 years of uh, not seeing or really playing at all, uh, we left our friendship and he went his way and I went mine and marriages and things like that. And then when we got back together, it's just like we just saw each other yesterday. And it just, you know, it just, uh, that friendship never went away. For you, what is the best part of playing with Shooting Star? Oh, gosh, uh, you know, playing live. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's always been my thing. Uh, you know, that was Van's thing. Uh, you know, we even had a trio that we did. We played around town. Van loved to play so much. So, you know, most guys just like to live in a studio and, uh, you know, going out and playing with the guys that's in this band now is just amazing. Uh, yeah. Do you have uh, a lot of upcoming shows? You just going uh, now and again, or how's your schedule? You know, we're working on shows like every week, you know, with the pandemic, uh, you know, the inflation, gas prices, you know, all that, all, all that good stuff that we love to hear about. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're uh, booking shows as we go. Uh, hopefully next year, uh, trying to work on a new CD, uh, you know, just everything that you do to make music. So you guys are writing new music then and, and trying to put out a new project then? Well, we're trying. We're trying. Yeah. It's uh, not the easiest thing to do nowadays, but, uh, you know, uh, we're working on it. We hope to go back in the catalog, maybe grab some stuff that wasn't put out and uh, see what we can come up with. That's That's exciting. Um, for the audience, what can they expect from a shooting star show when they show up? If they've never been to one or maybe they've never been to a classic rock show, what can they expect from you guys? You know, the music is amazing. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they'll go shooting star and then you just tell them the songs. Uh, Last Chance, Hollywood, Hang On For Your Life, Breakout, Flesh and Blood. And they go, oh, my God, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've grown up with that music and they're going to get like, you know, the show's amazing. I mean, the players are amazing. Uh, it's it's just a tight group and we're just glad to be out playing and performing. And uh, for the audience, what can they expect from a Missouri show if they've never been to one or even maybe a classic rock uh, genre show? Well, uh it's uh, we're doing all Missouri songs, of course, mm -hmm. and we're throwing in some uh, other uh, covers that Ron liked. Uh, we're doing a kind of a thing with about the, the Beatles. He loved the Beatles, so we are, we're doing a Beatles song, which you know it's taboo. You should never do a Beatles song, <laughs> but we're going to do it anyway. And um, and then a couple of others, I think. And then uh, I'm not sure. I know we're doing the Beatles song this show and i'm not i don't think we're doing um any more covers after that because we're only playing not, uh 60 minutes so um uh but on our bigger shows you know 90 minute shows we throw some covers in just of, of the era of what we played in the, back in the 70s and 80s so i you know it's just gonna just it's just fun 
Bill and Dennis, thank you so much for talking with me this afternoon. I sure appreciate it. Everybody, come on out to Shooting Star in Missouri at the Kearney Amphitheater this Saturday night. Gates open at 6 p.m. The show starts at 7. You can get your tickets online at CarneyAmphitheater.com. So for everybody who's going to be here this weekend, make sure you go out there and see Shooting Star. Make sure you get out there early and make sure you drink a lot. <laughs> Water. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Guys? I was just getting ready to. Live. I was gonna. I was filling up my cooler. Yeah. It's supposed That's to be water. A, I think it's supposed to be 193 degrees or something like that. So make sure you have plenty of beverages. But I'm sure they will have plenty of beverages on hand. That's mm -hmm. this Saturday, seven o'clock, out there at the amphitheater. Uh, for I'm sure everybody's heard by now. On a sad note, kind of completely changing gears. Uh, yesterday. Uh, morning, a North Kansas City police officer conducted a traffic stop, and the driver of the vehicle uh, that he pulled over got out and shot him and killed him. Uh, so it was a line of duty death. It's the first one that North Kansas City has ever had in the history of their department. Um, I'm not going to give you the suspect's name because I don't want to give any credit um, to somebody who doesn't deserve it. We'll worry about that later when the charges are done and everything else. But Daniel Vasquez um, was the officer involved. He had only been on the department for l about a year. He was 32 years old, and our condolences go out to him and his family. For those of you who are interested, the uh, KCFOP Lodge 99 has set up a fund to uh, donate money to his family. Uh, if you go to their website, and it's unionly, it's it's a pretty long web address. Your best bet is just Google KC FOP Lodge 99. It comes up right away. There's also going to be links all over the place, uh, and we will put one actually on our website too. I don't think it's there yet, but we'll get it up later today um, to donate to his family. So our condolences to him and um, the uh, entire law enforcement family. Daniel Vasquez was 32 years old. Simplify your banking, simplify your life. It's easy with Kearney Trust Company. Kearney Trust goes beyond convenient locations and good customer care to offer banking services that make managing your finances quicker and easier than ever before. Online, bill pay, e-statements, and mobile banking are available to give you a positive banking experience so you can get back to your life and activities. Kearney Trust also provides capital to people and businesses so they can achieve their goals. Whether you know exactly what you want or just need someone to talk to about your dream, you can speak with them and work on that dream. Kearney Trust Company is your partner for success with two convenient locations in Kearney at 310 West 92 Highway and 701 Watson Drive in Price Chopper. The phone is 816-628-6666. Carney Trust Company, banking you can trust. Member FDIC. Electric cooperatives are different. We have a sense of pride in our local community and support the people who live here. That's why Platte Clay Electric Cooperative supports local schools, takes an active role in economic development, and works hard to keep costs down for its members. We exist for one purpose, to empower communities and energize life with safe and reliable energy. To learn more about how Platte Clay Electric Cooperative is working to achieve that mission, visit www.pcec.coop. Platte Clay Electric Cooperative. You may have noticed your shoulder hurting, or maybe a kink in your neck. The culprit may be looking right at you. Your phone. Think about how you use it. Does that pain feel familiar to you? Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Strathman with Kearney Family Chiropractic Center, and I've been practicing chiropractic health in Kearney for over 22 years. When you come to see me, I identify what's wrong and determine if I can help you. If I can, I create your personalized plan for relief. When you have pain, you can make an appointment by calling 816-628-6738, or you can visit the office at 301 South Platte Clay Way, Suite B in Kearney. Carney Family Chiropractic Center. Feel yourself. And 
welcome back to Carney Live. We've got Mike Dickerson and Jeff Streeter with us today, both of whom are veterans who work with Veterans Camping Initiative, which is a very cool organization. And I'm going to just jump right in with Jeff Streeter. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Mike. It's really great to be here. I'm so excited to tell you about what we got going on, but I, I'm just concerned. You said both of those names on the air, and, you know, we're local. We're from the area, so, yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about that. We might have some people <laughs> beating just, down the door. Well, I, you know, you can go on incognito if you'd like to. Is it too late to change your name on the air just it, to, yeah. To, it's a bit too late for that. Protect your identity? Well, yeah. I, I, I mean, you're that, not wanted in any states, are you, at this no, point that you know of? I really appreciate your concern. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I think this is a neat organization. I know we're having some fun here, but Veterans Camping Initiative just sounds like uh I don't know if it's if it involves camping. It sounds like fun to me, and uh, as long as the weather's not hot. But well, uh, but I know I know you got to live with that. But just uh, start at the start and bring us up to speed on how this whole thing got started. You know, we'll we'll start from the beginning. Um, of course, I'm I'm a veteran. Um, I got out years ago. My cousin Eric, he's from Liberty, another name ratted out on the radio. Uh, he got out of the uh, Air Force, retired from Tinker down in Oklahoma six years ago, maybe. It's been a while, and he was just depressed. When he was in, he had bounced from Ohio, Florida, uh, Sicily, and everywhere he went, they told him, oh, this is going to be your last duty station. And, you know, it just it's like the carrot and the cow. And he would get set up. And as soon as he gets set up, they'd say, you, we're going to deploy you. <laughs> oh. And he would be deployed, wow. uh, you know, never anywhere, real fantastic. Uh, and it just wore him out mm -hmm. after all those years. And he's like, you know. Physically, just, emotionally, all the above, right? All the above. Yes. And he's, he says, you know, he's had several surgeries and, and, you know, had to fix him. We all need fixed up. When you've been in the military, you get banged up. That's just the way it is. Uh, but he said, I just, I just wanted to disappear. He was not in a good place, you know. His, his marriage is a train wreck, and his, his body's beat up, and he doesn't feel like he has a purpose. And, and he says, I, I just, you know, can we do something? Can we go mm -hmm. camping? I said, yes, we will. I think the first time we went out, we, uh, I, I jumped in my truck, packed all my gear. He was living, uh, he was retired from Tinker, so living in, in Moore, and I grabbed all my gear, loaded up, and I headed down to Moore, and I picked him up. And, you know, before I even picked him up, his spirit had changed just that fast. I got there, and he had all his shit sitting out on the driveway, and uh, he was ready to rock and roll. And I thought, you know what? This is the game changer. We're going we're gonna to make something happen. So we went uh, down to Fort Sill. They have an excellent facility down there. We went camping, fishing for the weekend. You know, it didn't matter that we had 100 Cub Scouts camping right next to us. But we, we still had a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> time. And uh, ever since then, we've been finding little places to, to tuck back into a corner here or there. Just drop off the map completely. You know, some of the places you got to have a special key to get through the gate. And uh, being out of society completely makes a difference. But it, the idea is, with uh, the Veterans Camping Initiative, is... You have properties that are either donated or loaned or, or that you own, perhaps, I'm not sure, but uh, that, that you use as a, as a campground, a campsite, to bring veterans who need uh, a little bit of extra emotional support and maybe some, some teamwork and, uh, you know, from, from their contemporaries or, or even others, others who have been in the military, regardless of when they were in and out of the military. Is, is that... Am I, am I kind of right on that or close? That's exactly right. Okay. Um, these property owners, they're, they're property sponsors. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one we have felt like we need to plant roots in is out at the Turnbull Farm. It's south of Wallace State Park, about uh, three miles. Oh, by Cameron. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. The gentleman's name's Don Turnbull. Um, and uh, we, we met up with him. I actually formed all this in fall of 2021. And put out some flyers uh, down at Call Sign Brewing. A friend of mine, Steve Soros, owns Call Sign Brewing. It's a real big place. 
uh, we got moved into his new location, and I put some flyers out for the camping stuff. And one of Don's buddies saw this flyer, called him, and said, you need, you need to touch bases with these guys. Well, then we found out that he'd already built this facility just for this purpose, not for us. We didn't know him. He didn't know us. But he'd already had this facility put together. He did it during COVID. Um, his brother-in-law is a gentleman named Skip Rizzo. He's in California, works with PTSD uh, treatment facilities in Southern California University, SCU. And uh, it's all virtual reality stuff. So he was able to get a, like a virtual reality movie set, get it set up in this big shop that he had. And uh, what you're seeing is the part of that movie set that was used out in California for a project that they were done with. And he purchased that set, brought it up, put it together in the, in the barn. Um, and he's added, uh, he has a saloon, the jail, and then he's got, Bathroom facilities, shower, commercial kitchen. It's all here in the video when you'll see it. Yeah. Uh, it'll come up here. Yeah, but, I see that. Yeah. Yeah, for all, everybody who's watching on KMO TV, you can see it on there. Once again, as we always say, if you're listening on the radio, don't look at your radio station, <laughs> especially if you're driving. You're it's not, funny every time, though. Yeah. Well, because you know people do it. <laughs> uh, how sad is that? I'm one of them, but uh, yeah. Well, uh, what we're seeing, though, Jim, is this, I mean, very realistic Western-style set. Now, how does how do the veterans make use of this? I mean, this isn't a campground, but there's something there that, what's the connection with the veterans with this uh, Western set? Uh, this is where we can, well, there's a saloon, as you saw, and then there's a couple beds in the jail. So if you need to, if you don't have a tent or, you know, there's some people that don't have the ability to, to go out and sleep in the weather, uh, they can come inside. We can set up cots inside. You can sleep in the bed in the in the jailhouse. But, but the idea is that it's kind of an escape. It, it is, and it and is. you you get a sense even that it might that you might be in this old you know western town, which I think it looks looks really oh, cool. To, absolutely, to me. most of us like to hang out in that saloon. No doubt about that. <laughs> I could. That looks like fun. Yeah, I, I would go hang out in the jail and have flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, but that came from uh, one of the, the the guy that was out in California, right? I mean, that was his. And, and what was his well, name again? The guy, uh, Don's brother-in-law, Skip, uh -huh. convinced him. He, Don wanted to do something for veterans. It was it was when people were kind of funneling back from Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and we were having the COVID going on, and he thought, you know, I've got a big break here. I want to do something. I want to contribute to a cause that's greater than myself. So he built this facility. Skip and him were talking, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with these veterans with PTSD. And he says, well, I want to do something. I want to do something for that cause. And he built this facility, and, and it was just happenstance that, you know, he saw his buddy saw our flyer, texted it to us, and we got in touch with one another. Now we both have, you know, the same goal. And yeah. we're going get, to get folks in here, create this environment, that allows people to relax and either start the healing process or continue it. What we're finding, you know, what most people are finding out is that veterans are going to these uh, counselors and go to a, a psychologist or whatever, you, you know, mm -hmm. you're assigned. Uh, but they go to a, a counselor's office and they'll sit down there in the office. You're in an office environment and it's just going through the numbers. And... You know, the counselor asks, hey, is everything okay? Oh, yeah, everything's fine. And then two days later, you know, this prayer service member mm -hmm. takes their own life. Right. And I I can understand that. I, I think as, as I look at your website, it's veteranscampinginitiative.org. You have a spring schedule, a summer schedule, and a fall schedule. And uh, you have different retreats and different places you can go. They're, they're, these are retreats that are held at isolated locations and you're generally close to a pond for fishing and you get tent areas and campfires and places for meals and sitting so this is a group uh, effort I mean I think that's the the kind of the the unique part about this where they're not just these veterans are not sitting with uh, a single counselor in a in an office or a, a room a dark room somewhere on a sofa or where, whatever the case may be uh, how is the interaction with other veterans um, 
aside from the obvious difference that there's a whole lot more people in the area, how is that group interaction different therapeutically than one-on-one -on -one with a counselor? That group interaction uh, allows people, it, it builds camaraderie, number one. That is the main term we're going to use. And what that does is allow people to share experiences, uh, liked experiences. You know, not you can't go into a counselor's office that's prior service and somebody that's, you know, been to Mogadishu and, you know, you go to places like that and there's, it sticks in your mind. You'll never forget the smells. You'll never forget the sounds, you know, and you cannot relate to a counselor in the same manner. And I'm not saying that, that, Folks shouldn't seem, seek help with counselors. That is definitely. I understand not completely, the and, and and I having never been in the service, and certainly never been in a in a war situation. I can't imagine the trauma, and the the horror of being involved in something that's is is terrible. Is people, you know, seeing people killed right in front of you, on a on an almost daily basis. I I can't imagine you know the, the trauma that's involved in, um, you know trying to come home after seeing that sort of thing and trying to escape from that thing to get it out of your memory. And as I, as I understand it, it, that's not a thing that's easy to do, and therefore you're doing a thing such as this, the Veterans Caring Initiative, which I think is just terrific. Um, as, these, uh, as these gentlemen come into the campground, you know, uh, I would imagine that they're all somewhat quiet and they're not they're getting to, to know each other because these are people assume I assume these are people that don't know each other if you have a group of veterans who are struggling a little bit with some PTSD or, or other emotional issues um, how do they sort of become this this unit of uh, people who, who ultimately begin helping each other how does that uh, how do you break the ice with a group like this uh, usually it's just an introduction, shake hands, you know, um, what what branch of service were you in, what did you do, you know, when were you in. Uh, it, it, all, it all breaks the ice as soon as you shake hands, you know. Um, we've, my family and I have always had the, uh, a history of military service, and we, we, make it a point every year to attend the the veterans functions around Kansas City during November but uh, there's more there's more that we can do you know and as soon as as soon as people start showing up everybody knows what's going on and and you know there's there's interaction immediately it's, no, it's it's a palpable thing you 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 see it you notice 100%. it when the, yeah yeah just last month uh, i have a, a group of folks that we try to meet up every year sadly i can only hit it about once every 5 years yeah. but uh we all of us did secret squirrel stuff over in europe you know and and we're a very unique group very small group but every time we get together it's shocking to see how quickly someone can go from you know just day-to-day -day life you rejoin the group and it's like we never left right it's you know oh i didn't see this person in, since for a year yeah. i haven't seen him for a year haven't even talked to him and we all get in the same room and we're all family and it is it, it floors you to be able to see something like that and i thought you know what we can we can take something like this and and shift it to a community activity for veterans well and you know we're including active duty and reservists as well so it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting journey we actually have a, a retreat set up this weekend um, it's going to be hot but uh, if you watch the video all of that indoor stuff is climate controlled so we have a really nice facility there if the fish aren't biting we can come in we can do some uh, some cornhole we can play dominoes play cards you know sit in the saloon we've got music we've got everything that that you would need really um and we have some great sponsors wolfpack barbecue they're down there on burlington in the same building as call sign they're going to provide lunch on saturday call sign is providing with us with adult beverages um 
And Jared and Sam are actually local, Wolfpack Barbecue. They were here in Kearney for a while, and uh, they're down there now with Steve. So between Jared, Sam, and Steve at Call Sign Brewing and Wolfpack Barbecue, we're set up for, for food and beverages. How do, uh, how do veterans who might be interested in this get a hold of you, and how would they – how are you, I guess? First of all, I'd like to know how, how you got uh, your first – group of let's say experimental veterans into the first campground because you've been uh, you started in 2021 which is that was last year well that's when i put everything together mm -hmm. but to be honest with you mike i i started the camping in april uh and i've been building the networks and just a very very small group mm -hmm. but we come together and uh have these events our first event was actually at a wallace state park uh, the DNR guys out there were like, you know what, we've never done this before, but we're going to rope off the entire special use area. Oh, and, wonderful. And when I walk in through a door, any any door, walk in, knock on somebody's door, say, hey, I'm, you know, Veterans Camping Initiative, and this is what I'm doing, they jump at the chance to help. And that's what kind of clued me in is to knowing that this is going to be something that we can actually run with, and it will work. Uh, but this month of July is we've assigned it as the month of growth we're gonna to try to gain attendance we want to get some more people we want to get the word out we're on Facebook that's probably the best way is to get on Facebook go to veterans camping initiative on Facebook and look at our events and reach out to me if you have to mm -hmm. you know and uh, look at the map and like I said we're right up there by Wallace State Park off of 69 highway uh, the Turnbull Farm. If you know where that Union Church is up there, there's a there's a, a Union Church, um, not far off of 69 Highway on the gravel, and we're a mile south of that. That's where the farm's at. I would imagine there's a number of people out there that know exactly where you're talking about. I hope so, uh, but I, I want to definitely reach yeah. out to the community of Kearney and reach out to the uh, the folks in our listening area. Yeah, it's. Uh... It's veteranscaringinitiative.org. Veterans Camping I'm, I beg initiative. your pardon, yes. And that's my writing that I can't read. Oh, I'm right there with uh, you. But you also have a contact page on that website, veteranscampinginitiative.org. And uh, I assume that's all set up and working. Yeah, yeah, for the mm -hmm. most part. I, you okay. know, I really need some help with the website. I, I'm, I'm a radio repairman, but I'm not a computer tech. <laughs> well. uh, but, you know, if there's anybody out there within the sound of my voice that wants to help out with the web page, please contact me. But, yeah, we have an email at uh, veteranscampinginitiative at gmail.com. It's all one word. I, I figured we'd keep it simple, you know. E easy as all that, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jim, you, you keep leaning up to the mic, and I keep talking. I'm going to just shut up for a moment, if that's possible, and let you ask your questions. It's not possible. <laughs> However, right. I would agree with um, that. I, I, I am kind of, I think it's interesting. So you mentioned Call Sign Brewing. Um, and the, if you haven't been down there, by the way, and the Wolfpack Barbecue, mm, it is something to now, behold. Now we're hungry. Um, but uh, actually, they have the uh, Helicopter Happy Hour. Is tomorrow. I do know that. I won't be there this week. Uh, but the heli helicopter happy hour is tomorrow from five, four to four, five to seven, five to seven, and you don't have to be a helicopter pilot to go. Don't ask me how I know. And I know the KC Aviators is the uh, first Thursday of the month K down there at Call Sign. So they have all sorts of stuff going on down there. But they, they do. They're right next door to Sonic on Burlington. Yes. Yeah. So you can do that but uh wolfpack set me up more than once but anywhere there's some free advertising for you call sign <laughs> if you want to give brian watts a call here at the station he'll get you set up for some other advertising but i digress um the uh now i can play. mike blue he, mike we started talking of, about barbecue yeah, and I jim then lost I, then it. i got hungry and you know how that goes but um well i i think i think it's great that um uh, you know, Jeff Streeter is with us today and uh, with Veterans Camping Initiative. And I, I just think that the concept, uh, while it's it seems to make perfectly good sense, um, I can't imagine that you were just sitting around thinking, hey, this is exactly what I'm going to do. It, it feels like this sort of grew organically uh, with as you were helping your brother and, uh, and, and camping out with him and that 
that sort of uh, that peaceful kind of uh, the relaxation that ensues when the phones aren't ringing and things aren't your obligations are, are really not the most important obligation you have is to maybe uh, you know throw a fishing line in the water and maybe catch a fish which is not altogether bad but camping out is a good way to relax believe me I know that and uh, I, I just think it's a neat way to uh, to pull a bunch of veterans together and uh, particularly in uh, in this sort of therapeutic manner that you've done well, that was cousin Eric. Uh, brother oh, Brian, but, but, brother Brian comes out too. Uh, well, I beg your pardon. I stand corrected. You know, yeah, Brian and I have been camping mm -hmm. since yes. we were very, very small. We grew up outside. Uh, Eric grew up in Liberty, uh, a little bit different. But when he went to Sicily, he started camping and and really enjoyed it. And you know, we when he retired, we got together and and we formed a solid camping initiative yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah and we uh we realize that you know everybody has to have the chance to go out and refresh and recharge and to right. be able to bring more than two or three people together for camaraderie and healing uh that i think is is a big payoff if we could just affect some people reach out to some people and do some good things to allow them to I guess have a better week. Uh, you know, yeah. there's a right now, especially right now. There's so much division in not just in our country, but in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and veterans have, for some reason, a struggle to merge back into society after you leave active duty service. Coming back into society is a challenge. I don't know why, but um, maybe it's just the attitude and the training that we've received. I love what you're doing. Uh, that's Jeff Streeter with Veterans Camping Initiative. And uh, we're going to come back here after the break with Mike Dickerson. And uh, Mike is part of this same organization, but he's also written a book, which is real interesting. And we will visit with him as soon as you have seen or listened to these important messages. Stay with us. You're listening to Carney Live. A special thank you going out to underwriters like these for their support of KPGZ. You value choices when it comes to the products and services you bring into your home. That's why Platt Clay Electric Cooperative gives you control over the energy you use. PCEC offers members ways to save with energy efficiency rebates and demand billing. You even have the power to choose the resources used to produce your power. To learn more, visit www.pcec.coop slash power. Flat Clay Electric Cooperative. Your power, your way. Migraine headache. The throbbing in your temples. The pounding in your forehead. Extreme sensitivity to light and sound. Your neck feels so tight it could snap off. Oh, the debilitating pain. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Strathman with Kearney Family Chiropractic Center. And I've been practicing chiropractic health in Kearney for over 22 years. When you come to see me, I identify what's wrong and determine if I can help you. If I can, I create your personalized plan for relief. When you have pain, you can make an appointment by calling 816-628-6738. Or you can visit the office at 301 South Platte Clay Way, Suite B in Kearney. Kearney Family Chiropractic Center. Heal yourself. Online banking at Kearney Trust Company gives you 24-7 access to your checking, savings, money markets, CDs, and loan accounts. You can access your accounts anytime from your home, office, and mobile devices. Online banking with Kearney Trust combines convenience and flexibility to bank on your own terms. Kearney Trust Company is a partner for success with two locations in Kearney at 310 West 92 Highway and 701 Watson Drive in Price Chopper. The phone is 816-628-6666. Kearney Trust Company. Banking you can trust. Member FDIC.
and welcome back to Carney Live. For those of you just joining us, it's good to see you this afternoon. Our next guest has just released a book. His name is Mike Dickerson. He's no relation to me, but I do find it funny that you got Mike Davis, Jim Dickerson, and now the guest so Mike Dickerson. If if we had kids, if right? You, no. If I, no, I know where you're no. going, and I love this idea, and I just but I feel sorry for Mike Dickerson that well, he would be the net result of that. I'm going to say something that may not be very popular <laughs> right now, but neither one of you are neither one of us are able to have children. <laughs> wow! Wow! I got nothing. That's so, all I've got to say about that. Oh, Mike, how's it feel? <laughs> I, I can see you sitting there in a big, like, baby Huey diaper. I, I that am. Would, you know, I, I've got. I'm having a moment. And so, I, uh, I've are, been called so many fantastic accolades and titles over the course of my life. Love child has never been one. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. So Mike. those of you who wondered what Mike and my children would look like, not going to happen. Anyway, Mike oh. Davis joins us today. He's written a book called. Well, I'm Mike Davis, but I didn't write the book. And thank you, Jim. Mike Dickerson. <laughs> wow. And we've lost control completely. So if you get a chance, go to Call Sign Brewing. It's down in Oh, here we go. City. Oh, we'll man. They had you. better become a sponsor after yeah, that. Talk yes. to them about yes. that. Yep. No Call doubt about Brian that. Watts here at the station. But anyway, Mike Dickerson has written a book called Positively Dax. It's a service dog's adventures. And we'll talk a little bit about the book. There it is right there. For those of you who, once again, are listening to the radio, don't look at your radio and then crash your car because we don't want to be responsible for that. But anyway, Mike, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So before we get started, just tell us a little bit about uh, what I know your, your involvement with all the other stuff we talked about, but kind of talk to us a little bit about how you got started and what made you want to write this book. I have, um, it has been a few challenging years. and uh, Get yes. right in that microphone, Mike. There you go. That's good. You're good. Yeah, just just, just move right up. Go. Move your body up to it. There you go, there buddy. There you go. Yep. Yep, right. you're good. You're good. Okay, I'm going to try to be a better grown-up now. Sorry <laughs> about that. So a few years ago, I started a project. I've been writing books for a few years. When the pandemic hit, I had to find something to do other than do my best Chewbacca makeover. And I thought, okay, so I started writing books, uh, and it was to give myself some purpose. I'm a disabled veteran, active duty Army, retiree, and uh, retirees lead the way, if anybody knows what uh, that means, and uh, my little Army joke today. Uh, probably call sign. It's probably like, yeah, I know what that means. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, so I was working on this kid's book, and I started sending it to a publisher, and they sent it back. to like, hey, can you crank out some more of these? I said, yeah, I can absolutely do that. I just want something to do. I want to put some good in the world. Um, just because you're out of the Army or you have a different challenge in your life, it doesn't mean you're done. It just means you have to find something to pivot and excel at. Not that there's a expertise of any kind. I did that to see if I could do it. And it was just a challenge myself. And I think there's something that helps build some character with that. So my friend Jeff Streeter... We go back to the second grade, and I know you've never heard of this large community that has a population of probably 4 million people by now, but it's literally right down the street called Lathrop, Missouri. So when you said Jeff Streeter and Mike Dickerson were in the studio together earlier, several retired administrators of northern Missouri probably got a chill down their spine <laughs> thinking, oh, dear God, they're together again. They're in the same room again, not just the principal's office. So Jeff calls me in the fall, says, hey, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm actually working on this book, and I'm going to donate the 100% of the proceeds of every book I sell is going to go to charities in the area. And then, you know, a few times a year we will switch out those charities just to put a little good in the world and to give us some focus and something to do. I don't want to be that guy that sits at home and gets mad watching television or has to turn it off or – uh, and Jeff was like, hey, so I'm going to work on this Veterans Camping Initiative. I was like, you know, that's a good thing. Why don't we just partner up? We're out to put some good in the world, however we're called to do it, and uh, I'll help with whatever we can do. And uh, Jeff was kind of underselling himself earlier. So the boots on the ground, that guy is doing, and to have that kind of a facility, which you've been able to see from the video, right down the road in your own backyard, I mean, it's phenomenal. Uh, the first day I was out there and I had met Don Turnbull and uh, was hearing about Skip Rizzo and was kind of doing some homework, and that has come together faster than anybody imagined. 
nobody's, it's kind of like the military. Nobody's joining that for the money. And it's just about the fellowship. So when I was writing books, I thought, you know, I'm working on this book of my service dog, Dax. I lost him a year ago to cancer. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of how I'm paying it forward for my pal. And uh, I'm actually working on a new project I'll talk about here in a minute. But um, I was close. I was fighting to get it to Santa Soleil at the end of the year. And I told Jeff, I said, you know, we should partner up and we'll just start networking. I said, people don't realize the number of veterans, the number of small business owners, and people just in every block in every direction that are looking for something to to go along with and it's more of it takes a village and that is the mindset that we've kind of had with uh, bci it's the mindset i have working with casey hope givers they have uh, done a good job putting that together bci uh, it's it's growing faster than we had expected and it's we're in the early stages and to see other people have some interest whether if it's checking the website out, coming and hanging out. For me, it's the fellowship. I need that fellowship. I need the iron sharpens iron kind of thing. I need the the interaction to know that hope and humor are going to get us to tomorrow regardless of what's going on around us. And, um, yeah. And so, the, talk, uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, Mike. Mm-hmm. So talking about your book for a second, uh, let's talk about Dax for just a second. How did you, how did you come across him, and, and how did that journey get started? So I am the VA's $23 million man, and I can't do any of the cool stuff the $6 million man could. But uh, I've, I have been sent back from heaven about 17 times in 11 years. and uh, Or, yeah. Oof, math. Sorry, man. Yeah, we're not but, good at uh, math yeah. either. We have a problem. Yeah. And um, so – I, I'm a transplant guy, too. So I was paired with Dax in 2015, and he ended up growing into the third largest service dog in the VA, 138-pound golden retriever, and that is him smiling on the cover of that book. And uh, everywhere we went, he made a friend, and I thought, I want to be like that when I grow up. All the silly stuff going on around me, I want to have that kind of resolve. So I thought, what a way to honor my pal and uh, write a book. So I put this book together. It came out in December. Uh, I did make it to St. Sleigh, thankfully. Um, I'm working on another project that will hopefully get to St. Sleigh. Um, and I am allowed to say hello to my friends at Barnes & Noble today. <laughs> I had to call and get legal permission to do that. Can you believe that? And, um, yeah, so I'm actually doing a new project uh, to sell more books to raise for charities in the city, in the area, through KC Hope Givers. So they collect all the book sale money, and then they pick a charity. They give them the money for the sales. And so the book, uh, if somebody's interested in the book, where can they go get it? KCHopeGivers.com. Or you can go to Amazon. You can go to iTunes. You can go to Google Play. So you can go to Carney there. Live and call in here until <laughs> Brian Watts signed me up for one of those. So it's out there all over the place. It's called, uh, for those of you who are watching on Chemo TV, you can see Positively Dax. It's a service dog's adventures. Lots of pictures in there, Mike. Oh, these are uh, these are fantastic. Yeah, uh, we have a uh, a similar dog. So and uh, yeah, and they're just I, I know the the breed. The yes, it is. and yes. So it's kind of my own personal legacy is I I'm always trying to find a challenge to do something um, to show my kids I can battle back. We can always do better. We can find a way to strengthen our resolve. So a couple of weeks ago. I was lucky enough, I was on a recreational vacation in Washington, D.C., and was actually, um, my book will be available in the Library of Congress very oh, soon. Outstanding. Congratulations. So we kind of yeah. had our little national treasure theme. Playing. Yes. <laughs> you know, and um, to walk through the alcoves in the Library of Congress and realize, hey, Dr. Seuss is over in the next building right down the hall. And I just wanted to see if I could do this and put a little good in the in the area. A pretty tall here, cotton. Here we go. Yeah. So like, hey, well, you're yes. Missouri. Yeah. Do you know there's a uh, treasure map hidden on the back of the I, declaration? I did not. You know, I my kids were kind of teasing me because my youngest is like, Dad, steal the Declaration of Independence because she was just going <laughs> right into National Treasure. But I'm, I'm going like, to recommend not against that. that. Yeah. Yeah, don't so do that. We, we have a yeah we have just, this joke with the Secret Service in my family, so we're going to leave that alone. I, I always thought that was a group that didn't like, that really didn't have a sense of humor. You know, come to, to find you. out, if you go and you try to take a White House tour on the White House lawn, this is pre-9-11, if you go to try to take a White House tour and you get in the wrong line, it ends up being the press corps, and you're in the back of the line, and you don't have one of those like special tags, they, they have a different set of people person skills, even if you're active duty military, and it's, yeah. So I've never uh, lived that down. We'll, we uh, stand warned then. Yes. We'll, we're, the, we're, we're, yeah, we'll 
keep that in mind if we're ever there in that line. I did notice that you, this month, you said uh, on your website, and that is kchopegivers.com, uh, you're proud to announce that Synergy has been chosen as the next KC Hope Givers 2022 Receivers of Hope. What yes. does that mean? So when the book first came out, we partnered with Harvesters for a while, and there was some. There's always a demand to meet the holiday needs. The cost of proteins and foods were accelerating. So I thought, okay, well, let's throw our hat in the ring, and and uh, KC Hope Givers uh, partnered with them, and then we switched to Synergy in April. And Synergy is a well-known outfit in uh, North Missouri. I know they partner with some stuff in, uh, with Jackson County and them. They help people transition out of homelessness, out of domestic violence, out of all the bad things that could happen to someone in the city. They have an outlet to help you transition it out of that. And they're, they're phenomenal. Um, I speak with them, and we play phone tag regularly, and there's a lot of hardworking folks doing that. Uh, speaking of which... Uh, the kchopegivers.com website has an application. So if you know a charity you'd like to recommend maybe for selection that all 100% of the book sales would go to for that amount of time, quarter-ish, I'll say quarter-ish, um, you should fill that out on kchopegivers.com, turn that in, and see how it goes. And Brian has that up on the screen. He had that up on the screen a minute ago, and that's the good job Brian. under the job, Hope Brian. Helper application. And uh, terrific. Yeah, I am aware of Synergy, and I remember driving by this, uh, the, the big sign, the big three-dimensional characters, the letters that say, Be the Change. Exactly. Just off of I-35 and, yep. and trying to think of the cross street that's over there. It was by the old Howard Johnson's. That mm -hmm. one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. that dates myself. There's some Old Testament. I, I, job, I know it right. Exactly. I remember, didn't they have the 32 flavors of ice cream it's along with a stone with the... tablet in your hand. Good job. Good job. I know. Job. I, know. I, know. I got a stone tablet in my head. Wait a minute. Howard I know. Johnson's. Wasn't that a hotel? It was, but oh. they also had a restaurant over there that uh, I can honestly say, I, as, as, a, as a youngster, I loved it because they had fried shrimp. And so we would periodically... Have a family night out at the Hojo, but, but that was have, before they called it the Hojo. The Hojo, and they right? had ice cream. Yes, they had tons of ice cream, and that was just a—it was kind of—it was a '60s thing. I, I, say, <laughs> I must have missed that yeah. part. I know, I know, I, I know. Need to get so, out more. But uh, anyway, be the change in uh, Synergy Services over there, right off of I-35, yes. at uh, across from, and I guess that would be further east than of uh, of the old Howard Johnson's. Yes, it's off of Parvin, it's Parvin Road, right? Parvin there. Road, thank yep. you. Bingo. I know there's Parvin Road. Uh, yep, yep. Well if, you, done. if you're running to a whole bunch of uh, fair summer park kind of equipment, you drove too far. Turn around, go back down Parvin Road. Sounds great. And uh, now the book uh, is is just. Uh, it has the most charming, cute picture of a golden retriever on the front, and that would be Dax. Yes, that is Dax. And uh, and you you and Dax were partners for quite some time. And uh, yeah, we were paired in 2015. I was fresh off a transplant, and um, they they thought, yeah, he may help with some mobility in that. And he ended up growing. So after about six months, I had to call my doc at the VA. I'm like, hey, I got to buy a couch or a recliner. He's like, why? Is something wrong? I'm like, no, no, health-wise, I'm good. I mean, I mean, you guys have rebuilt me. Everybody's doing a great job for God and country. But the dog has gotten so big, he lays <laughs> on the couch. I have nowhere to sit in my own house. I'm mm. like, it, it's literally Clifford the Big Red Dog. And I, I mean, I have the real, I, I don't yes. want to endorse another you know, character, but, I mean, I have the real thing <laughs> in my book. And I, I, I go back to a part of the book is I have this logo that I put in all the books. And it says, be the good in the world, yeah. or believe there is good in the world. I saw it, that. And then inside that motto, it's be the good. You can, yes. We're all called to make a difference to do whatever it is we're called to do. And for me, that is it. So, And I put that in every single book I publish or get close to publishing. Uh, my next project, uh, again, we're trying for Santa's sleigh. I bet I know a publisher that's probably sending me text messages right now. Don't ever put a time label. Uh, tell me about Santa's sleigh. You've said that. You've mentioned it a couple yes. of times. Yeah. That seems to be the lucky month to try to publish kids' books. So I, for whatever reason, as God would have it, I have been able to set myself apart because, A, I do my stuff in real pictures. B, it all goes to charity. It, it's kind of like the military. Nobody's joining that for the money. We're right. just trying to serve and do our part. So, And um, with that being said, the new project that I'm trying to get to Santa's sleigh, um, the holidays are big book 
you know, between Memorial Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend and Christmas, right. you know, the holidays yeah. is your, your big kids book selling time. I know back to school season is pretty hot too. Um, there is a, a service dog in Clay County named Lola, who's going to be pretty famous here, uh, hopefully by the end of the year. And I've met Lola and uh, her handler at the Clay County Sheriff's Office here a few weeks ago, and I, I got the tour. Not that same kind of tour, Mr. Dickerson. I was in the admin <laughs> side. I have uh, so, yeah. I understand the tour, though. I've, <clears throat> don't ask me how I know. And, <laughs> and there's also a one of 222 service dogs in the country that's actually designated as a courtroom dog in Platte County named Rasta, who was a golden retriever, and Lola is a Labrador. And uh, I, I hear Lola has actually toured some of the local schools here, but I don't have permission to, not yet. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's something on my to-do list in the next couple months. Hi, Mr. Superintendent, can I put a picture of Lola at your school with your school's name that just may be the exact same as, you know, Carney? Right. And can I publish that? I see where you're going with yeah, this. So yeah, so I can't go to prison <laughs> with the other Dickerson do you over know, there. Do you know what? Uh, oh, there he is down here. You can't see him. He's off the screen. You know what his name is? Uh, it's not Dickerson, is it? New. No. Okay. <laughs> there was a there was a big contest to name the bulldog. Apparently, he didn't take part in that. I'm, I'm you know from Lathrop, so I have yeah. immunity in that in that area, sir. You know what the nice part about this book is, uh, right here. For those of you, this this it comes in paperback, but look at this. Oh yeah, that the hardcover is pretty impressive. Ooh, I like it with, I a, a, with a dust a dust jacket. There is a yeah. hard copy. Yeah. This is yes. the real thing here. Look is there. The cheap stuff. So. Yeah, <laughs> outstanding. You can get that yep. right there. So something, and that's on Amazon. You can get it on uh, Casey Hope Givers. Casey Hope Givers. So for good Freezing Press. That's that's the publisher, and they do a lot of good work for me. Very good. I, so, so other books are oh yes, are, are there's on the other way. stuff in motion. I'm yes. working on a series called The Hope Chronicles, which is much different than kids' books, and it's a bigger project. It's taking a very long, slow toll, but we're getting there. Very good. Um, if I could add, do Mike? Yes, please. Yeah. So, <clears throat> there's a there's a need for fellowship nowadays in the world, and Jeff started to touch on that with VCI and with Positively DAX, finding something to do in your community. And I, I often say we got to get back to building people and things back up. And there's just enough negativity out there that between Veterans Camping Initiative and Casey Hope Givers, those are two very local, substantial opportunities. Right here in the Northland, too. Right here in your backyard. Mm -hmm. You can just say, hey, if I'm led to help in whatever way it is, then that's available. And... I know we're not alone. That the best thing I've heard, uh, parents sending pictures of, hey, so my kid has to kiss the picture of the dog on the cover before they go to school. You know, I love that. Um, there have been veterans that have spent many years trying to do something similar, and they're like, I, I'm going to get in trouble. I, you know, I, I can't do this or I can't do that. And I said, well, why do you have to put limits on what you're doing and just do it at your own pace and don't worry about the other stuff and just – go out and do it. It takes a lot of, so Jeff's caliber character is better than mine. I mean, he'll just get out there. I'm like, Hey, we're just going to go do this. And I'm like, what? well, I don't well, feel tardy. You know, I'm doing my van. I don't feel tardy. Yeah. Well, well said Mike. And, uh, we sure appreciate you being here. Mike Dickerson and Jeff Streeter. Thanks so much. Next week, Jay Bettis is going to be on with us. He called me the other day, Brian, and I, I referred him on to you. So, and I didn't know how soon we'd get him. We look forward to seeing Jay on here. And he's done some help for the veterans, by the way. And Jason, no, what? I was going to oh, yep. finish that. Jason Withington is also going to be here along with Chief Jay Johnson. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's three people. But don't forget this weekend. Don't forget to go out oh. to the amphitheater and see Shooting Star and Missouri. Don't miss it. Don't miss that. Make sure you get out there early. For those of you who are interested and want to come up and see me, I'll be in Wisconsin for the, <laughs> for the uh, short field takeoff competition and the air show up there. And it'll be on ESPN 12 or whatever it is, but that's on Sunday if you want to come up and see me. And then you can come back and see Mike on Wednesday. Yeah. Because the, the uh, short field takeoff and landing is a lot more interesting <laughs> i don't know I so like watching mike i appreciate you jim thanks so much for being with us brian we appreciate everything you do and thank all of you for watching or listening to carney live we'll see you next week